Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Now this is the third video I've made in this little series on the GP5. The first video was all about getting started. The next one I made was about MIDI pad 2 and how you can integrate MIDI within your setup. If you haven't yet checked out those videos, I'll leave links down below and up in the corner as well. So do feel free to go and check those out. There's been a really good response to them and I'm really pleased that so many of you are getting some value from this sort of content as well. Now, if you're new to the channel, have a little look around. You might find other things of value and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content as well. In this video, I'm gonna show you about this app here, which is called Touch OSC and how you can customize things in Touch OSC to take full advantage of the GP5 as well. I have created this template and stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you how you can get this for free as well. And in the same way as the last video I made, we are sending things wirelessly from the iPad over to the GP5 through the Widdy U host over here. So if you haven't yet checked out that video, do have a little look at that one first. It will hopefully make things a lot clearer for you to understand before delving into the world of Touch OSC. Now Touch OSC is a really useful tool to have and there's so many things that you can do with it. We're just gonna be using it as a MIDI controller to send over commands over to the GP5 like we did with the MIDI Pad 2 app. And I've customized everything on this particular layout here you can see in front of you. So on the left hand side, I've got the patch selects which go from zero to 29. So if I just tap one of those, it will load the correct patch. So number five, number one, number 16, 24, etc. I've got my patch up and down just below that. Now that's moving upwards through each of the patches one by one, and then I can go back down as well this way. I've got the bank up and down, so they will move up in banks of 10, so 53, 63, etc., and then back down as well. Then I've got song list mode set up over here, so that's gonna go through that cycle of A, B, C, D, etc. So these are the ones that we'd predetermined in the last video, upwards and downwards. And then I've got my tuner over here, so I can enable or disable the tuner. I can turn on or off the effects. So you can see I've got my effects. I'll turn them on here. You can see noise reduction and modulation. I can turn them on or off with this button over here. And then I've got the individual effects down here. So each of them represents one of the blocks, noise reduction and modulation. I can turn on or off. We can't see the other ones. As I mentioned in a previous video, we can't see them on the screen. So let's open up the app and we can do this side by side with the Touch OSC app. So split view, open up Touch OSC. It's not a very clear way of doing it. So I'm just gonna slide this over to a little bit of a different kind of view. We can see the app on the left-hand side and we can see Touch OSC on the right. It's still not the ideal layout and you wouldn't necessarily do it like this, but without using another device, this is the only way I can get you to see the app and Touch OSC on the same screen. Now you can see I've got the cab and EQ turned on over here. Now if I tap these once, they won't go off but they will this time. So I've got them maximum value and minimum value, modulation, delay, reverb, etc. And you can see all of those blocks turning on or turning off. Then in the top right, I've got the patch volume. If I go to patch settings, you can see the preset volume there. I can turn that up or down. And this is behaving more like a volume as opposed to the MIDI pad two way of doing things. And that's about it. That's pretty much everything that you can control within the GP5 at the moment. And it's all laid out in a template that I've created in Touch OSC. Now, if you're thinking of using Touch OSC, I'm gonna leave a link to this template down below, which you can access for free. And if you are getting value from it or indeed any of the content, you're more than welcome to contribute towards the channel via the buy me a coffee link that's down below. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show you how to set up a simple button in Touch OSC so that you can get started and customize things yourself. You might not want everything on the screen in my particular template. You can move things around, you can change things, you can change colors and change the size of buttons and things like that. Don't feel like you have to keep it the same way. So it's probably a good idea if I show you some basics within Touch OSC first and then it'll probably make things a little bit clearer for you if you go ahead and download it. Now it's just around $15 or 15 pounds from the App Store to buy, but you can also get hold of a desktop version of it as well. And it's free to use the desktop version. Now Hexler, who are the company that make Touch OSC, rely on people to purchase licenses to obviously support the development of the app and the software. But in terms of using it, it's all free. So it's probably a good idea to test things out first to make sure that it's suitable for you and you'll get some use out of it. And as mentioned, you can also get hold of the app for iOS and Android as well. So let's take a little look at the desktop version first. Okay, so if you're interested in the desktop version so you can have a little browse and, and get stuck into it that way, head over to hexlet.net and scroll down to the bottom and follow the instructions to download Touch OSC for your desktop, whether that's Mac, Windows or Linux. And you can also get a license here as well if you wanted to contribute towards the development of the software and the app. Then you'll obviously be prompted to download and install it on your computer. And once you've done that, you'll be able to open up Touch OSC, which will look something like this. Now here you can see the 
the template that I've created for you. And again, you can download this from the link below for free. And we'll have a little look at that afterwards. I think it's probably a good idea to understand the basics of it first of all. So I'm just going to go and open up a new project. And you can see on the left hand side, I've got the area that I could start to add things like buttons and labels and faders and all those kind of things that we can use. And on the right hand side are the adjustments and the parameters and areas that we can make changes to each of our labels and buttons and really customize this the way that we want. So I'm just going to right click on this blank area over here and I'm going to add first of all, I'm going to add a button and you can see I've just got a little red box that comes up on the screen. I can resize this so I'll make it nice and large. I can change the color on the right hand side over here. So let's change that to blue. And now I've got a button that I can move around anywhere on the screen. Now I might want to customize this a little bit more and you can go into more detail if you wanted to. I'm going to change the corners to be a bit more rounded. So I'm going to change that value to 10. Now you can see I've got some rounded corners around this box here. I can also change if I wanted to not have corners, if I wanted that to be a full box. You can see the outline is now set to full rather than just on the corners. And there's a few other things that you might want to delve into to fully customize this as well. Now, if I press this play button at the top, it will open up the area that I can use to send those commands over. So now it's behaving like a button. I'm just going to click the mouse and you can see that light up and go off. So it's just a momentary switch or a momentary button that I've got enabled at the moment. I'm going to click the little dot in the top right hand corner and I can go back to that previous view. But let's say I don't want it to behave like a momentary switch. I want it to be a button that turns on or turns off. Now that means I'm going to change momentary to toggle press or toggle release. I'm going to change it to toggle release. And what that means is it will send the MIDI command that I'm going to set up. So if I'm going to use this on an iPad, when I tap it with my finger, when I remove my finger, that command will be sent. And I can obviously toggle this on or toggle it off that way as well. If I change this to toggle press, it means that that command will be sent when I press my finger on the button rather than release it. I think it personally for me works better when I set it to toggle release. So I'm just going to leave that on toggle release. I'm going to leave everything else as it is. Again, have a little play around with things you might find you might need to make some minor adjustments here and there to get it to work fully for you. But I'm just going to leave things as they are. For now, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. You can see I've got an OSC message here. I'm just going to delete that because I'm not interested in sending an OSC message and I don't want to risk any conflicting messages being sent as well. So I'm just going to click and delete that one. And you can see I've got an area now where I can send MIDI commands and I'm going to leave everything as they are just to demonstrate this. You can see we've got control change set up. I am not going to change that to program change or anything else. We're going to leave that as control change. We're going to send a CC message over to the GP5 and I'm going to leave the channel as channel number one because if you watch the previous video you'll know that it's set to channel one on the GP5 so we don't need to change the channel. We've got index set here and that means I can't change the CC message that I want to send out. So I'm going to change index to constant and then it allows me to change the value that I want to send and I'm going to send a CC value of 69 which will turn on or off the effects on the device itself. I'm going to leave everything else set to zero to 127 that means it's going to turn on or off depending on the status of the button. And there's one other thing that I wanted to add, which was a label so that we know what this button's going to do. So I'm going to right click and click label. You can see a label appears and I can go over to the right hand side and change the text that we've got here. So I know this is going to be that control message. I'm going to find I'll put it in capitals and I'll put effects in brackets because we know it's going to turn on or off the effects. And there we go. I can pop that somewhere on the button. I can change the color. I can make it transparent by just turning everything down here. And now it blends in more with that blue button. I can also change the size this way so we can get it to be a bit larger and obviously change the position, etc. So you can fully customize this how you want. We've only just set up one button for now. And what I'll do now is I'll just go ahead and save this and then airdrop it to the iPad and we'll see if that works. Okay, so I've just airdropped this over to the iPad and as soon as I did that, it just opened up straight away on the screen. Now, in order to send this command over to the Widi U host, you will need to go to this chain icon in the corner and set up a connection. You can see I've got my Widi U host enabled here as the send port and the receive port is touch OSC. That's the way that it's going to work for me and how the information will be sent from the iPad to the GP5. And then obviously if I just tap this now, nothing's going to happen because it's still in the editor mode and I can still make adjustments by clicking on the right hand side here and scrolling down, changing the label, moving things around, etc. But when I press play, this is now giving us the option to use this as a button. So you can see what's going to happen here is the effects on the screen here, modulation and noise reduction are going to turn on when I tap this button, which they do. 
and that works nicely. And then they will turn off again when I tap it a second time. So that's how it works in a nutshell. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail in TouchOSC in this video. If you are interested in learning more about TouchOSC, let me know down in the comments and I'll make some videos going forward. It's really great to see so many people get value from this content and I will be making more videos using other MIDI devices and the GP5. I've got a few things in mind as well and I've even got an idea in mind that we can use the keys on a MIDI keyboard to send and change patch settings, to turn on and off effects, to change all sorts of things within the GP5. So stay tuned for that one if you are interested in that. As always everybody, if you've got any questions or suggestions on future content, do let me know. There is a link to this template down below. So if you want to go and download that for free, you can do as well. And if you do get value from it, you're more than welcome to contribute to the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link below. And as always everybody, I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta.